Hi there, my name is Ted, KN4SWR, trail name Hawkeye. KN4SWR is my ham radio call sign. Hawkeye is my trail name. You can call me Ted. Thanks for joining me. I just want to let you know that I have no product affiliations. I have no affiliate links. I have no relationships with any of the companies that produce any of the products that I'm showing today. I've purchased everything in front of me with my own money. I'm making three versions of this video. If you're watching this version, you're watching the short version. I want to start by recognizing that November is Indigenous Peoples Month, and above me, flying on my flagpole, is the tribal flag of the Wabanaki tribe of St. Francis, Quebec, Canada. Four generations of my family were spent living among the Wabanaki in the 1700s, actually 1600s to 1800s. So four generations of my family lived with the Wabanaki, and I want to uh, just recognize during Indigenous Peoples Month uh, the contributions that they made to this country and uh, recognize the fact that the land that we are sitting on is uh, has been lived on and, and uh, enjoyed by people for potentially tens of thousands of years. Following Hurricane Milton here, which uh, had no real impacts other than, than uh, electrical loss for about five days, just on this side of the street, my neighbors across the street had power. Um, I did some follow-ups and some some investigations and just some lessons learned from Hurricane Milton can never be too prepared for a power outage. Uh, during Hurricane Helene, we were not impacted here in Naples very much at all by Hurricane Helene. But if you've seen the stories out of Black Mountain, Swannanoa, the rest of North Carolina, East Tennessee, absolutely devastating. Hurricane Helene, uh, they had no cell phone service, uh, no electricity, very limited ability to travel. and after looking at a lot of YouTube videos from some regular YouTubers that I follow, one of the lessons that they learned was the only way to communicate was via ham radio. I've had a ham radio license for about four years. I haven't been active with it, and uh, that has changed. I am upping my game. I have a technician's license right now, and I'm going to go for my general very soon, uh, because in a grid-down situation, the only way that people in the impacted areas of Helene were able to communicate was via ham radio. I want to start by saying that the first lesson that I learned during Hurricane Milton when we were without power for five days was that I could not get my two 2500 watt inverter gas power generators to run at all. I just can't rely on gas power generators to operate when you need them and I know that's my fault. That's a maintenance issue. You're supposed to run them once a month. Uh, that responsibility is on me. That's not a that's not an inherent uh, issue with the manufacturer or the product itself. It just lets me know that personally I need a better system. So my primary power backup for power outages during hurricanes or any other scenario is going to be solar. Uh, following Milton, I ordered four 200 watt Renogy solar panels. That gives me a total of 800 watts of power. And I was able to find those for $200 for a two pack. So that's 50 cents a watt. And I thought that was a very impressive price. I have had for quite a while, a Jackery 300 battery backup. Uh, and I recently, after Milton bought a Jackery 1000 battery backup. Everything that I've got is running on solar power. So I want to talk about radio communications in general and why that's important for a grid down situation. Um, and what you can do to get started right away today as part of your hurricane preps. One of the first things that I'm going to recommend to you is going to be a Baofeng UV5R. These things are pretty cheap. Um, the Baofeng UV5R comes in at about $35 on Amazon. And that's going to provide you with a 5-watt radio, a small battery, and a small um, antenna. And... This is great. This will allow me to listen to NOAA weather radio. That's important. This is going to allow me, if I have one at my neighbor's house and one at my house, we can communicate on FRS frequencies. Yeah, I know ham radio operators. I get it. Comment below. Florida Sarnet is a, an amateur radio network that I can monitor on this system and listen to during a hurricane, it's going to revert over to emergency operations only. And I can listen to all of the statewide emergency operations centers in the state of Florida, whether it's in 
call your county where I am or up in Pensacola, I'm able to hear all of the statewide uh, emergency operations centers on this little radio. And that just kind of lets you know in general what's happening. And the communications are, are really fairly limited. They're, you're not going to get a lot of detailed specifics about what's happening in a specific area. Uh, but that, that's a comfort to know, that's a comfort to know that you have the ability to listen in on those communications. A basic bow fang is great to throw in the car. Just drop it in the uh, glove compartment and the center console. Have one of these in your vehicle just in case you never know. These are great. Very portable, very handy. So I've got my little portable station set up here. Got my canopy overhead. I've got my GP1 Comet antenna attached to the front of the canopy. I have the canopy weighted down with pavers so it's not going to blow over in the wind. I do have a wind gauge here on the table with me and right now winds are at about two to five miles per hour. Uh, that's important because once they start getting up a little bit I may want to start taking some of this thing down. On my right I've got the Jackery 1000 sitting on top of two, two toolboxes. One of them is kitchen, one of them is electric. On the other side, I've got my Renogy 200 watt panel. I have a, an orange case over there. That's a full size first aid case, has all my first aid equipment in it. I've got the Jackery 300 sitting in the shade behind that orange case to keep it cool. I have a master copy field manual that I keep with me or field book that I keep with me with Sharpies. Already this morning, just setting up in my front yard, um, I've made two new friends here in the neighborhood. Now, among the preparedness community, there's several different philosophies, outlooks, however you wanna talk about that. Uh, and, and one very, very important uh, part of the preparedness community is that itself, community, establishing community. Um, I'm set up here. I have this extraordinary setup. My neighbors are already kind of used to me doing some weird stuff out in my yard, but uh, this is a pretty big setup. And as people are walking by on the street, walking their dogs or just out walking this morning, they're asking questions. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Talked to three people this morning. One I knew, two, I've, uh, two parties that I did not. So I go over and I explain to them, I'm setting up a ham radio, portable ham radio station. In the event of a grid down situation, power goes out, internet's out, cell service is out. I want you to know that this canopy and this setup means that you can come to me and we can sit here together and I can broadcast a message. Now, I'll be upgrading to a general, so I'll be able to transmit on longer reaching frequencies, but I'll be able to transmit a message to somebody else, someplace else, who does have access to internet and cell phone and they can text your family members, email your family members. We can let your family members elsewhere know that you're okay. That's what happened during Hurricane Helene. That was a really, really important part of what happened immediately after Hurricane Helene. In my master field book, I have just lots of, of notes. In the back of the notebook, I'm keeping notes about who did I talk to? What were their names? How am I gonna recognize them? Um, community is very important because in a grid down scenario, people are going to have needs. And if I can establish a communication setup where we're able to let your family and friends know that you're okay, that's a good thing. Um, in an SHTF scenario where we only have our community to rely on, no one's coming to help us. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten neighbors that I know immediately around me, whose houses I can see, who I talk to on a regular basis, we've got community. We look out for each other during hurricanes. We come out, we talk, we communicate, we let each other know what's going on. That is hugely important. I want to talk a little bit about the Eaton Executive Shortwave Radio, or actually all band radio. Right now, um, I'm set up to my Comet antenna and I'm monitoring the Naples Airport Tower, uh, listening to communications down at the Naples Airport. Bravo 1, Charlie 1, Charlie Alpha, cross from way 32. Getting really good signal on that. I actually put that antenna down because I'm using the remote. Uh, this is great because I can flip over to um, FM radio. Now I've got my local news station on, FM. 
I've got my local stations on so I can listen to the FM radio. Now on the Eaton, I've got AM radio, FM radio, I've got ham radio, shortwave radio, air frequencies. I'm monitoring Coast Guard C-16 over here on the Baofeng just because I live near the coast, the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And it's just kind of interesting to listen to what the Coast Guard's saying every however often they call out. I'm also monitoring the Florida Sarnet on that Baofeng. Real quick ham radio license and GMRS right, license. If you're gonna buy a Baofeng, you, you do not need a license to listen on that radio. You don't need to be licensed to listen. I can listen to all frequencies on my Eaton. You can listen to anything that you want to. To transmit, you are limited. Um, now there's a firestorm debate on the internet about the Baofeng UV5R transmitting on FRS and GRM, GMRS frequencies. FRS and GRM, GMRS, that's what you're gonna get down at the big box store when you go in and buy a two pack of handheld radios. Now, according to the FCC, to use GMRS, you do need a family license. Super easy to get. You go on the FCC website. I think it's about 60 bucks and maybe about 70 bucks right now. You pay that. It's good for your entire family and it runs for 10 years. Once you want to start transmitting on the ham radio frequencies, you do need a technician license. Technician's license are actually fairly, I'm not going to say easy, but fairly uncomplicated to get. You can take an online course, you just YouTube. There's some great YouTube courses out there. Buy the study guide, maybe a $20 study guide on Amazon. And uh, the local ham radio club will have a, a test probably once a month. You go in, you take the test, you pass the test, and you've got your technician's license. The next step for me is to get into a general license so that I can transmit on some of those other frequencies. Uh, but just to, to clarify some of the conversations about licensing. Okay, so next steps for me. I'm using the Retevis RT95, which is a 25 watt dual band radio, mainly in my Jeep. And I, I really mainly just use it to monitor frequencies. I'm not really transmitting on frequencies very much, um, but the RT95 sits in my Jeep and I can monitor everything really well. Uh, the next steps for me are going to be to upgrade to a general license. I'm looking at the Yezu FT891 as a base station and also portable station so that if I do this kind of portable work, I've got the FT891 that I can use as part of a portable station. Uh, in order to do that, I need a better power supply. Right now, I can power this in through the Jackery. I'm not gonna get the transmit power. Maximum power transmitting on this 25 watt radio running off of a Jackery battery is only five watts. It will not allow me to transmit any higher than that. I need a plugged in power supply, which is on order, should be here, I believe on Tuesday to be able to do that. So with the Jackery 1000 and FT891 from Yezu, with that set up, I should be able to communicate easily, easily within most of the southeastern United States so that in an emergency situation, the next time that we do have a major impact here where I live, I can set up and be part of my community as part of a communication system. And, and yes, there are, there are official channels to do that. There are groups that do that, and I will be entering those groups uh, but just knowing that I have the ability to do that from my home, from my Jeep, being able to roll into a neighborhood, set up and communicate is hugely important. So if you're a ham radio operator, I would love to hear your tips. I'd love to hear your advice. Uh, I'm not looking at doing a hardwired base station install at the house just yet. Grounding everything is going to be, that's a complex thing. So uh, when it gets time to do that, I'll be looking into those things. Another really, really cool uh, thing is that the flagpole that's behind me is a service first flagpole. It's a telescoping flagpole. So I can easily drop that flagpole down, mount the GP1 to the top, run it back up. And now I've got my antenna 25 feet up in the air. I'm getting extraordinarily good reception for Sarnet just with that GP1 sitting it's on top of the canopy. So top of that's probably eight to 10 feet off the ground. Having that antenna mounted to my flagpole mast, again, portable only, temporary use, couple of hours, take it down. My HOA doesn't allow installed antennas in the yard, so that's not even on the table. But to be able to do that in a situation or just come out on an evening, set up the flagpole, run that 
uh, that uh, antenna up 25 feet, I should be in good shape. Again, if you have any tips or anything about that, let me know. I'd love to hear them. I'm learning, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments section below. Again, my name's Ted, KN4SWR, trail name Hawkeye. Uh, I'd love to have you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the like button if you found any of the information in this uh, video helpful. Please share it with your friends. You can share this on Facebook. I find some of these tips extremely useful. Uh, we're in the downtime now as we're wrapping up hurricane season. Now we're kind of in that, that preparedness mindset, learning from what were the shortcomings from this hurricane season and what do I need to be prepared for next hurricane season. So thank you for joining me, and uh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks. Have a great day. 7-3.